Hey church fam. We started a conversation a couple weeks ago about being healthy, not just spiritually, but mentally and emotionally as well. In an effort to keep that conversation going, we wanted to share the pieces that we learned that encouraged and challenged us with the hope that they can be a blessing to you to refer to now or later on down the road ahead. One of the drives behind starting this conversation in the first place stems from a question we were asked in planning for this year. That question was, what is the one thing you want to see happen in your ministry this year? Our answer, healthy kids, healthy students, healthy parents and families. We want to see our people healthy. Before skipping down that wishful path, we had to first stop and look in the mirror, which is never fun to do, and ask, am I healthy? In my own home, if I'm supposed to lead my kids to be healthy through trials of this world and point them to Jesus, I myself need to be healthy. As a leader responsible for guiding other people's kids, I must do the work on myself to be healthy so I can better lead the people I love. An important piece to living a healthy life is to acknowledge what's not healthy. This world is not healthy because it's full of sin. Life here is hard because it is and will continue to be full of trials. Satan is attacking. There is a spiritual war, a mental war, and an emotional war. And Satan is not waiting for our kids to reach a certain age before he considers them fair game. Evil doesn't play fair. It's important for us to recognize Satan as a real enemy and face the reality that he's not going away until Jesus comes back. It's equally important for us to know who we belong to. And while we wait for him to come back, we have everything we need to live a full, abundantly healthy life here on this earth today by choosing to live in Christ and not apart from him. The good news is that you are not alone. I am not alone. We aren't supposed to figure this out on our own. So. Let's dive in and get some insight from God's Word, which is thankfully alive and active in our sword that we are supposed to pick up and fight with. We're going to look at Nehemiah helping rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that had been broken down by enemies, but we're going to look at it through the lens of a parent fighting to rebuild what Satan has broken within their family. That'll give us an idea or a picture of what we feel God wants us to mirror and how we respond to those attacks. Okay, let me set this up. Walls were important. They helped mark territory in the land, show who owned what land and who had authority over governing that land. They served as protection. They allowed control over what was going out and who they were gonna let in. For us today, our walls are the hedge of protection that we pray up and around our families. The wall of Jerusalem was being attacked and it was basically rubble, broken, it had holes and gaps and those gaps provided zero protection because the enemy could just walk on through and steal, kill, destroy, however they wanted. So the wall was the utmost importance. And so Nehemiah goes to help rebuild the wall so that God's people could again have protection. And the book actually names five enemies that are plotting together to attack God's people for trying to rebuild the wall they just destroyed. And so the enemies pull their forces together to hit God's people in those broken, vulnerable, and weak spots. Does that sound familiar? Do you have yourself pictured trying to rebuild, put back together what Satan has had a heyday with? Whether it's your kids, whether it's yourself or your finances, if it's your marriage. Now listen to this goodness that God shows us. Here's what the scripture says, picking up in chapter 4, verse 10. The strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. Are you still picturing yourself 
Have you been in that desperate place to say, my efforts are not enough. I am not strong enough. There is too much damage, too much brokenness. It is too hard to do on my own. I know I have and am currently beside one of my kids helping them navigate through a place of feeling lost. Listen to what Nehemiah decides to tell the people to do. He says, go to the lowest parts of the wall, to the open places. I'm going to station you there with your clans and with your swords and your spears and your bows and your hand. Instead of pulling everyone behind the highest and strongest parts of the wall for protection, he sends them to the weakest spots and puts them with their people. He says, you, John and Sarah, take your family and go to that gap over there next to Nick and Rose because they are your people. They are a part of your tribe and hold the line together, support and fight together. Verse 17 actually says that they rebuilt the wall with one hand and held their swords to fight in the other. Bet you didn't realize our parenting superpower of multitasking was actually in scripture. That's what family is. Standing next to your tribe and saying, here, you slap on the mortar, I'll pile on the bricks. We'll do this together. During your hard season while you work to rebuild around your kids, your marriage, even yourself, which you're allowed to do, I am going to roll up my sleeves and stand in the gap and pray and fight for you. I'm going to rebuild with you. And when it's my season to rebuild, I know I have the hope because God has surrounded me with the power of a tribe. This next part is key. Nehemiah gives the people a pregame or a pre-battle speech. I actually think he's shouting it from the sidelines um, during the fourth quarter of the game because in verse 14, he says, Do not be afraid of them, the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. That is why we started this conversation on being healthy spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. We want to see each other so we can be for each other. The battle is on, you are fighting, there's rubble and holes and gaps in the walls of protection that you have prayed up and around your families. It's the fourth quarter. Your strength and energy is fading and you can't do it all on your own. Remember who you belong to. A great and awesome God who loves you and wants all of you heart, mind, and soul to be healthy. Find your village, your clan, stand in the gaps with them and hold that sacred wall line together. Rebuild, cheer for, encourage, pray, and fight for each other. Healthy kids, healthy students, healthy parents, healthy homes, healthy people. As your church, we are committed to being your tribe. We're committed to be your family. As one of your family members, whether you like it or not, I'm huddling us all up, singing like your sister Mirabelle from the movie Encanto. Bring it in, bring it in. Bring it in, bring it in. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord together. We see you. We are beside you. We want you to be healthy. And we love you.